Right then guys, welcome back. Um, it's a nice sunny crispy morning in the Peak District. So, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you might know that um, I've signed up to do my Mountain Leader Award. This is something I've wanted to do for about 10 years now. I've done plenty of uh, mountaineering uh, activities over the years. But what I've decided to do today is come out on Big Moor. So Big Moor um, is just a moorland just behind Cable Ridge, White Edge. It's pretty featureless. So I've decided to push up on some of my map reading skills and I decided to make a video of basic map reading really. So I understand there's a lot of people enjoying the outdoors, but I do guess quite a few people don't know how to use the basic map reading skills of the compass. So in this video, I'm just gonna show you the basic steps I'm going to get the, the map out, order it to it, find some um, features on the map, explain the different features to you guys. We're going to have a little adventure and see if we can uh, land on the marks what we've got on the map. So what I'm using today, I'm using the um, Explorer Compass. To be fair, it's a little bit overkill for basic um, compass reading, but I needed something like this for when I do uh, my mountain reading award, so I end up buying this one. I have used a compass in the past when I used to do fell running um, events, I did use the Explorer one. And you've got lots of different features on this compass. But for now we're just going to start with the basics and go through some of the basics. Also uh, my chosen map um, is the one in 25,000 Explorer OS map. So if you go into an outdoor shop you'll see some maps, um, OS maps, and they're one in 50,000. I like using the uh, one in 25,000, it's a little bit more detailed and I think more suited for um, off-road. So what we need to do first, we need to find out where we are on the map. Well obviously uh, we've set off in our chosen destination. Hopefully you know where you set off from, otherwise you've just got there, so if you jump to the car park, it's good to use. And the other thing as well, what we need to do, um, we need to um, put it here in the map. So on a map you've got the grid lines, Grid lines, they, what they stand for is that the, you've got three um, norths, you've got your map north as such, your true north and magnetic north. But for this we're just going to work on the grid lines and assume that everything's pointing in the, the north direction. And the other thing you can do is look for features. So if you set off from a car park, uh, there's features around or main roads, you can use that um, to mark different areas. So this particular area, I mean, I've ran in this many a times, but it's always interesting to uh, find some deal on snow circles, outcrops, what you can see on the map, and, and to pick it from there. Right, so you can see there, um, in front of us, there's that gate, and uh, there's that wall there, and there's more lands. These are a bit of a trail there. So you can see the wall um, we were just looking at, and it's just there. So we parked here, and we can come down this path. You can see the wall, so the, the, the fence is there. And the, the gate's just there, as you can see the map itself. So what we're going to do, there's some stones there, what we want to walk to. So you might be able to see just there. And you can see these lines here. So what these lines are, and um, the contour lines, so basically it's making the map more 3D. It's, I saw a great photo, um, how you can um, assume what he's doing. So if you look at your knuckles, nice and flat, obviously do that your mountains so what these contour lines are doing closer they are steeper the ground so sometimes you might be on a, a mountainous area in the lake district and you could see there um, it's a short distance but it might be quicker to contour round and come round to the back of the map the grid lines I'm on a, I was talking about are these here the grid lines so what we want to do we want to um, get the map and put it in their uh, place so basically what we've got there we've got the map you see there you see that's where we are okay so we're going to have a look at this here now and we're going to find the north so what i want to do obviously you can see that we're here and these lines are pointing north so we want to spin the map to point north okay so so we can see what we're working on so you can see there i'm on that point there and i'm going up there so if the, if the line is running up true, it's 
three hundreds would be um, no. What I want to do, I want to get to these shelf stones here. What I want to do, I know I'm here, in this corner. What you do, you get your map, you line the edge of the compass up. And to be fair, this isn't a great uh, example because obviously I haven't got half the map out, so what you can do, you can do that there. So you can come over to that, to there, to there. Now, you've got this here, this red area, and that's called, a lot of people like to call it uh, the shed. So the red in the shed is going to be going from that corner there across to these stones here. So these little lines inside the uh, bezel of the compass, um, you've got red ones on top, black ones at the bottom. And what we want to do, we want to line them up with your grids. When you're spinning round, it's nice and straight, so we've got to line up with the grids. So that's giving me a, a reference of 80 degrees. So all we do now, turn the compass. And basically, as long as that red's in the shed, so the red north's in the shed, and you follow that bearing, you'll see the outcrops. Now you don't have to look at the compass all the time. The best thing to do is keep the distance pick, um, what you need to be focusing on. So you hold the compass flat in your hand. What you want to be focusing on, head towards there. Now these grids here, they're a kilometre each. On here, you've got the compass here. So for every four centimetres, you've um, each class as Kilometer. So we measure from there to there, we're looking at just under half a kilometre, just to them rocks, which is about right. So we're going to um, stay on this grid reference, head towards those rocks, and take it from there. So you can see there, we've got the red, point it up nice and flat, and the rocks are just up there where we're heading. Other features you can look for, so if you can see um, just there, they stand here for brook. You can um, use that as uh, like a feature as such. So we've walked down the path at the side of the wall. So if you look there, the wall's there. We've just come from down there really. We've followed the, the wall. But to make sure you're on the right path, it's always worth checking different features. So you can see here we're on the brook. So the rocky outcrop originally I couldn't see. I could see, sorry. Um, I can't see now. So what I looked out for were just different features. So I can see that tree there. That's what I mean, you, you don't need to head for the, the, the longer distance, break it down into easier paths. Now we're at that tree, we can see just behind it, it's the rocky outcrops. And we're just going to um, head to the tree, walk past it to the outcrops, carry on this um, bearing. Once we're there, we're going to get the map out and find the next landmark. So you can just see from here, um, you don't have to be up in the mountains to learn how to use a map. It's probably safer to, to learn it on the... Um, area that you already know but if you're in the hills and you get an OS map just study the map and um, what everything means there's keys on everything and you might find some really interesting spots that you've never been to before some spots where not all the um, tourist people go right then guys so we've arrived at this uh, rocky outcrop now so obviously we've done the, the first part of the um, Bearing uh, which is a swaggy outcrop. We um, had points of interest along the way where we checked on the map. So we found the, uh, the stream um, across the bridge, which pinned towards that tree and up here. So now we've done all that, we just went to this destination, walked to the end here, um, taking one bearing which didn't really prove anything. So we need to just to push on different skills and go to different areas on this map. And um, the route I've got planned is a safer route. The idea of this is taking the bearing, making sure I land on where I need to, because obviously uh, foggy weather, um, you're not always going to have the uh, views like I've got today. The other great thing of this, when you do get into a map reading, I've got your grid references, so there's lots of different places in the media stream where there's like uh, stone circles for instance, and if you watch some of my videos, there's rock art on the Great Merchant's Edge, and I found a lot of these places by reading up about them, checking grid references, honing in my math skills to find that location was somewhere really hidden. So once you've got these bases, you can have some really good fun with it. So what I want to do now is I'm going to 
want to do now, I want to head to uh, this broke area here. But there's no real pass here, so you can see the contour line. So what I want to do is the edge of the compass lined up. Um, I'm going to start point to the end point. I'm going to um, place it on the map. So I want to go to there. So we're just going to drop the compass just down and spin these lines to meet up with the grid lines. It's much easier when you're not trying to film it. I won't be able to show you guys how to do it if I didn't. So I'm just going to check if the lines are all lined up, which they are. What we need to do is spin the compass. And if you look up, the way we need to be heading is straight forward. So I can't really see a feature as such. So we'll have to keep checking the uh, bearings on this. Because I couldn't see any features as such, every so often it's worth checking that you're on the right path. When I look up now, right in the distance, you guys might not be able to see it, I can see a rock um, sticking out. So now I don't need to keep checking my compass because I can check on the bearing that I am following the right way. So we've tried the location we need to be in through the rocky outcrops, it's just behind the camera. I can see in the distance where I need to be, it's just this valley, I can swing the camera around. As long as we carry on this bearing, These are the rocks I was speaking about, but I could see them right down in the distance where you can see the brown uh, tree around about there is uh, where we're heading. But we're just going to check that we're on the right path, so we've got the map, the compass out, sorry. And as long as I follow that route there, I want to head to where I need to be. Probably just off a little bit on the section, but I can dial that in closer we get. Be fresh, we've come from here, just down here, we went to these stones here, and from there I took a bearing, we headed to this outcrops here. What I want to do is go to these stones here, it's an area I haven't been before, and there's no proper paths as such, so I want to make sure that I'm taking accurate bearing and make sure that we can find the right way. So I know we're here, so again lay the compass flat alongside it. Like that, then we're going to twist the compass bezel so it lines up. I'm just going to put the camera down so I can do it because obviously it's hard to do it holding it. Go so back to the map. We finally found the uh, rocky outcrop of stones. To be fair, it's quite hard to find it, it's only a little scattering. Um, but we're here now, so just going to have a brew. We'll find his next reference. So the next point of interest is about 365 meters high. It's a tree point actually, that's why you can see the triangle. We're these little stones here just in front of us. So what I want to do is take a grid reference. Now I've already twisted the pedal uh, to point the right way. But if we twisted the map and looked up, obviously that's what he's saying is north. We're going to turn around. So what we're going to do is make sure the um, reds in the shed as they say. We're going to lift it up on a flat hand and point it straight to that summit. And which that summit is, if I follow this um, compass in a, a straight line, we're going to hit that. But obviously, you haven't got that opportunity all the time, so you would pick out reference points. Also, checking um, on the compass um, how far it may be. So you can see it's just about a kilometre away. Now, depending on what terrain you're using, so if it's a nice flat terrain, you'll walk past it. Obviously, this is bracken, so it's, it's going to take me a lot, lot longer. So, I'd guesstimate that normally taking me, I don't know, about 10 minutes, but I'd say about 15 20 minutes. Um, you can count your steps if you get right into it. So, you can see now we're up at this trick point. The last location really so we've had a fantastic day today hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as i have and the dogs have um, just get outside get a map get a compass get a decent compass that is 
Um, you can't spend lots of money on a um, decent compass. But start having some fun, enjoy the basics. Um, I don't think you should just rely on your iPhone as a mapping system for satellites. You can always um, lose signal when you're up in the mountains. You can be up in the mountains and get caught out. And it's not hard to do, as you can see from this video. So check out my other videos if you like this sort of thing. Hopefully I'll show you a bit more of um, the mountain skills I'll be um, having to use doing my uh, Mountain Leader Award. Thank you.